All right, guys. Uh, obviously, good Illinois team coming in here. Um, tough, old, great on the glass, great at attacking in transition. So uh, important day to get ready for that. Questions? Uh, you talked after the uh, Northwestern game about just needing to get better in a lot of areas, and you have a lot of short turnarounds here. How much better can you get? Yeah, I think I think that's the challenge in front of us right now, and an exciting one at that is just figuring out how to really maximize our time uh, here as we do have short turnarounds, different styles of play we're playing against, teams that have different strengths. So, you know, being ready for that, but at the same time, uh, you know, keeping our focus on, you know, what we have done well and obviously needing to do that better. You know, what were some of the strengths of this group here when we, we've been playing well? And, and getting back to performing um, in those areas better. So combining that with just the idea of, of, uh, of preparing for teams that are gonna bring different strengths uh, as a group that you're gonna need to uh, neutralize. Some of those areas you can play better, obviously you have offense rebounded at times this season, you've made shots at times this season. Like, right, as things have maybe trended in the direction, how do some of those things get better? Well, I think I think we've got to show it to them on film. They've got to be, um, you know, we've we've got to do it in practice, um, and uh, we've got to defend the three-point line better. We've got to offense rebound better because that's been a strength for us. We have to be much more efficient on the offensive end than what we've been uh, in particular the last game. So it's through film work and then through some work on the floor as well. We got to compete in practice. All right, you know, <clears throat> obviously you're focused on getting better every day, and I, I know there's clearly still a path to success, a path to the tournament for you guys, uh, 13 and 7. It's just, do you feel any added pressure right now? There's all, all, always a, a lot of pressure coaching at Ohio State, but do you feel any added pressure right now to, to produce? Oh, I think you always feel pressure to perform and to get your team playing best, whether it's early in the year, late in the year, this time, you know, November, December, January, February, you always feel that for sure. You certainly can feel it too when you're when you bust a little bit. Do you, how are you feeling about this team mentally right now? And, and just, uh, you know, how they are responding to what happened on the road Saturday and, and, and everything like that? Yeah, I think, I think I feel good. I feel good about them. Um, I think anytime you go through difficult structures, it's certainly going to be a confidence uh, thing. The guys need to, they need to see success and experience that. And, build their confidence through that. So I think you're always aware of that as a coach, but uh, I feel good about this group's approach yesterday in practice, and we'll see how it is in today. Uh, today. Chris, you talked about last year, uh, at this time, you know, starting to celebrate small segments of play in the film room. What was, you know, in practice that you maybe guys did during that time too? Was there anything different you changed in terms of actual practice during that stretch? Yeah, not really outside of maybe shortening it. Um, there wasn't a whole lot we did. We did shorten the rotation during that stretch as well, um, which I think was, was important for us. But, but um, yeah, not really anything uh, outside of just shortening the prep time, uh, the practice time, the time on the floor, uh, and the film, the film time. Yeah, and then you talked about defending the three-point line being an issue. Is there a consistent theme that you see? Is it communication on switches? Is it just effort and not getting a hand up? Like, what do you see? Consistent. Yeah, I think it's a combination of things. Um, it's a combination of things. I think some of it has been um, better challenges, better contests. Um, uh, I think that's been that's been one area. Uh, being able to get through screening actions better than what we have, navigating those a little bit better. Um, a couple have come off of the poor switches. So it's been a combination of things. Chris, uh, you've probably been asked, is it possible that the heck out of you why this January thing happens because you've come into these this month with a head of steam. Yeah. Uh, this year, last year. Yeah, I think, Clay, to, to a certain degree, you know, as a coach, you understand, like, I, I've said this, you know, a million times that, that one, they're not the same thing. You know, the December schedule is not the same, same as the January schedule. Now, having said that, we can perform certainly better and we take accountability in that. But to compare, you know, schedules is, is just not, um, it, they're, they're not the same thing. I think uh, we've, we've looked at, are there, is there some things that we can do, you know, on our end in terms of our guys experiencing a little bit more fatigue in this month, 
Um, you know, we're playing maybe another game or two. We play more road games this time of year, typically in January. It's just the way the Big Ten is always scheduled. But uh, outside of that, you know, you're always looking and seeing if there are things we can do to prepare them better, to play better. Um, you're also recognized that it's just a different, it's a different animal. You mentioned on the show how the players, you try to get the players to ignore the noise, stop reading or listening or seeing whatever, and they be critical. Do you have to tell your staff that? Do you tell yourself that? that yeah, yeah, no, I think that's, I think it's it's easier for, um, Clay, it's easier for older, you know, people who um, have been in it, you know, you just, you, you understand to a certain degree how unimportant that kind of dialogue and conversation is towards, uh, towards really anything. It's just, you know, people are going to talk, that's what some of you guys get paid to do for a living. So, of course, it's, it's part of it. It's what you get paid to do. So, not other people are going to are gonna do it for, for a variety of reasons. So, I think you, it's more a challenge to your players. You know, if that was something that was an issue with our staff yeah. or with me, I'd question if they have the makeup to be uh, at a place like Ohio State. Steve. Uh, offensively, uh, I think you were averaging 79 when you were 12 and 2, and then these last six games it's down to like 65, 66. Three point shooting has gone completely off the, the rails here. Uh, 58 in the last game. Uh, looks like they're jamming up your high ball screen, and there's nothing to overcome that. Northwestern seemed to dictate to you guys defensively what you could do offensively. Just what can you do to get back to where you were, Alabama, Santa Clara, where it was just it seemed almost effortless offensively. I know a lot of that's the opponent, but uh, what can you do to, to, to get back to that confidence level just where the points were coming in bunches, it seemed like, and those were good opponents just as good as the ones you're playing, it feels like. Yeah, well, some, some of them were. Um, <clears throat> I think, I think uh, Alabama was the other ones, not, not quite at the same level um, as the ones we played, yeah. certainly these last two opponents. Um, you know, I think I think the the ball their ball screen coverage did bother us, and uh, we needed to be better at attacking that. And we did uh, do some things better in the second half in terms of slipping out of some some of the ball screen coverage. Um, and I think with the ball has to just has to move a little bit more. Uh, we're trying to put a little bit more shooting on the floor, Steve, and hopefully that'll provide a little bit more spacing. Because right now, as you get into league play, the floor gets really compressed if you can't make shots. And, uh, and that jams up your entire offensive flow. And I think we've seen some of that with our inability to make open shots. The floor's, the floor's gotten really compressed. So uh, we need to add more shooting on the floor and perhaps a more skilled group uh, than what we currently have. Is uh, some of the, what's holding you up offensively carrying over to the defense because it just feels like a step behind, didn't get a hand up, Nobody around when a lot of these three-point shots go up, and it just. Uh, well, you know, I think some of those some of those have been true. Not not all of them. I think some of those have been some of the threes we charted were challenged. Kids, those guys made made open shots, but certainly some of them uh, were not challenged. I don't know if it's you know the offense um, necessarily dictating that. I just think we need to be better in that. Hey, Chris, I, just, I think you know, watching the Northwestern game, the thing that might have been the most surprising wasn't that you guys lost a game on the road in the Big Ten. It was that it was a 35-point margin at one point. And I, you guys as coaches, do you monitor that? If that's gonna, I've heard confidence has maybe been an issue in some of these games, both sides of the floor, bad offense can lead to bad defense. What, what have you seen on the plane ride back and just in practice with our guys upbeat? And do you have a, a prediction of how you guys are going to come out against a really good Illinois team? Yeah, no, I mean, our only focus is is today. And in terms of playing right back, obviously it was a quiet plane right back. You know, you, you, you get beat like that, and you, you don't want a loud plane. There's obviously disappointment and frustration across the board. So um, yesterday, our, our, we, had, we had a good day. Um, our focus is today. Um, you know, it's good to have, even though it is a quick turnaround against a really good Illinois team, I think in some ways that can be a good thing. Um, and we're excited to see how our guys respond today. All of this, you know, so much of athletics is about how you respond. We have an opportunity to respond, and that's something I'm excited about.
talked to a lot about getting older. Um, and the youth of this team, even though some of these guys played decent roles last year. What is the challenge as a coach when you have a, a young team or you know, a team like you've got now? Yeah. What, what makes that difficult for people who maybe don't play crap? Yeah, I, th I think as much as anything, um, just the the experience of being it's a good question because it, it's, um, in a lot of ways, it's the experience of going through difficult things and then coming out the other side of it and taking those lessons. That's that's the real value of, of experience. There's a poise element of that. There is a, um, um, there's a perspective element of that. Uh, young players at times um, can feel their confidence individually waver and collectively waver when you go through difficult things. And I think when you've been through it a couple times, you're like, okay, like, I, I get it. Here's how we come out of this. Here's uh, the lessons that I can take from my freshman or sophomore year where I really learned how we came out of it. And this is what I'm gonna apply to this situation. Um, and that's leadership in action, really. Um, and there's no other way of, 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 of uh, kind of having that without, without going through it and experiencing it. And I think that is, um, you know, I think what certainly our sophomores uh, can look at it, but still they're, they're dealing with some of those things, bigger roles, bigger expectations, um, more placed on their shoulders. Uh, they're, they're dealing with some of those things as well. So then as you continue to progress through this year, how do you want to see those guys, specifically that sophomore class, deal with these things? And have you seen positive? Yeah, I, I think we've seen some positive things and we've seen some things where we're like, hey, listen, we can, we can, be, be, we can be better than this. We can handle uh, this better um, than, than what we've handled it. So I think it's been across the board. I, I think it's just honestly constant communication and dialogue from us to them. And I think that's that's what's required right now. We'll go last three. David, Adam, and then Adam. Chris, you mentioned on the show, uh, yeah, every team had its share of struggles. I mean, you know, last year had a share of struggles. How do you, as a coaching staff, maintain that motivation? Do you take a big picture approach, or do you try to you know, keep it one game at a time? Like, here's yeah. The next level? You know, it's a little bit of both. I think that can provide some perspective. But at the same time, you know, um, again, I think that's, that's a, a really relevant question. I think the focus. Uh, has to be on just what's in front of us. You know, nothing else matters. It seems like everything matters right now, but nothing else matters outside of just getting better today and making sure we're maximizing the time we have together today um, and just throwing ourselves fully into that. And that's what we've done as coaches, uh, starting up from the plane ride uh, back, uh, and, and that's what uh, our players have done. Uh, kind of going off of that, just, do you feel a sense of frustration growing throughout the team? I mean, obviously you don't want this to, to get out of hand here. You got the win when you were at home last time. Now you come back home. How do you keep this team from letting the losses pile up in their mind? Well, I think it's what we've talked about. It's, it's constant communication. It's regular communication. It's uh, trying to bring some perspective. Um, I think there there does have to be an element of I uh, can't feel heavy every day, um, um, you know. I think uh, there has to be an element of joy that even in the midst of something this challenging. So those are all the things we're trying to do in the midst in the midst of this um, perspective, regular communication, trying to find, find moments where we can enjoy uh, doing, getting to do what we get to do. When you look at the road games. I know there's not one thing that you can pinpoint, but it's been a while since you guys have won on the road in a true road game. How do you not let that kind of be insurmountable? And what do you think is the leading cause of that, knowing that you're almost a different team at home? Well, I think I think most teams in college basketball would feel like they're different at home. Uh, maybe maybe all teams in college basketball. But having said that, I think you just got to take accountability for how poorly we we uh, certainly played last time out. Areas where we can get better. We haven't performed poorly, uh, as poorly as we did as we did last game. Um, and I think again, you just got to focus on what we can control in terms of playing better, 
and uh, and putting that into action. Chris, you said at the beginning of the season that you weren't prepared to publicly name captains because you wanted to see some leadership stuff develop. Where are you in, in that process? Does this team have captains yet? Yeah, yeah, this team has, has got uh, a group of captains. Um, and uh, I think I've said Bruce and Jameson um, have been guys that, that have been captains. And that again, that's pretty fluid. There could be some guys we add here to the mix here um, down the stretch too. What, what makes that fluid? Seems like that's been kind of steady for you most of you. But what makes that fluid? No, it's always you? been somewhat fluid. We've always, we've added I guess guys you did before. Last year. Yeah, we've added guys before. And I've done it, I've done it in past years before. You just see guys emerge. Okay. You know, you just see guys emerge in, midst, in times like this where you say, hey, maybe his voice, we can empower his voice a little bit more. Um, and, and by giving him a captaincy, we, you know, he's demonstrated, you know, there's so much newness to college basketball teams nowadays yeah. that, that I don't know that I'd want to tie it just to these one or two or three guys because guys emerge in the midst of, of uh, all you go through in a six month season. And that's the reason. Do you, you have guys vote like you? I know in the past you have. Is it? Is it yeah, I don't. I don't want to give the specifics of that, but we we we've done it both ways. We just named them as coaches and we voted. Uh, we we've done both in past years.